I'm Connor Northrup. I'm now joined by UFC bantamweight Chris Gutierrez, who's fresh off a unanimous decision win over Andre Yule at UFC 258 this past Saturday. How you doing, Chris? I'm good, man. How you doing? Good, good, good. First off, I mean, too, just uh, congrats on the win. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, a win is always nice. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure you can uh, agree with that, but I know you kind of allude to at, at the end, too, that, you know, you kind of were dedicating that one to Jonathan uh, Martinez. So how much sweeter is it when not only do you get a win, but you, you get a victory over an opponent who, you know, did be a, a former te- a, a current teammate of yours? Uh, you know, it feels good. You know, it feels good, like you said, to, to get yourself. Uh, you know, obviously, you need to get that win. Also, to avenge a, a, a really close friend and a teammate. So, of course, it was like, uh, you know, it was like a two-sided victory for that. Yeah. I, I want to go into the fight a little bit, too, because I know the commentators were making a pretty big deal about that eight-inch eight uh, reach advantage. Which, uh, I mean, a huge uh, advantage there, too. How big of a concern was that for you going into that fight? Uh, I mean, yes and no. Uh, you know, uh, I'm the one in there. I'm the, I'm pretty good at distance, so uh, mm-hmm. you know he's he had a, yeah a pretty big you know an eight inch reach over me, but you know eventually he was gonna have to move in, and uh, that was his downfall. Yeah. I think it was like a little over two minutes in, and then it ended up just kind of being a current theme, at least throughout the first and second round. Too, your corner was kind of yelling at you for for more more volume, uh, being more a little active too. Was a lot of that just kind of like a feeling out process? More, uh, you know, was it more about his reach, or was it kind of just you know his ability to counter? What was kind of uh, why were you being like tentative in the beginning, or do you feel like you you weren't? I mean, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's uh, like you said, all those factors, uh, you know, play a big. A big role in the, in the fight. I yeah. didn't want to just I didn't want to just run in recklessly and get pieced up, you know, and, and catch a you know a hard left because he's he's known for dropping people with that straight left he's got. So you know I was a little hesitant because I was just trying to get readings and trying to get some uh, intel on it, and uh, I ended up doing it. And then I you know the I ended up flipping the fight around. Yeah. That that first round was pretty close too, but then you, I, I you know, I felt you kind of put a stamp on that with that head kick. But I saw in the post fight you said that you didn't even really remember throwing that. No, you know, I, uh, I knew, I, you know, I just, I noticed he kept dipping his head off to that side when he would throw a, a jab or he would, you know, he lunges in to throw a uh, that left. And of course, you know, I practiced that, but I didn't really, ex- I didn't really know when I was going to throw that, you know, like at that moment in time. And uh, like I said, I didn't even know what I hit him with. Um, I remember, you know, everybody going kind of crazy, but I was like, what happened? Like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously he's backing up. But uh, yeah, it took me a while to really, after the fight, to really know I hit him with that head kick. Yeah. I feel like we hear that a lot from fighters too, where they'll they'll do something in the fight and they don't really recall it, even though, you know, everyone watching did it. That's pretty crazy. You know, you're so uh, so focused and that you're so mm-hmm. in tune to what you got to do that sometimes you're just spaced out. Yeah, that's incredible. One, one thing I did want to get into, too, is uh, there's a website called MA Decisions. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's uh, basically where journalists just go on and they can they can post scores. And everyone had it in favor of you. A lot of 29-28s, a lot of 29-27s. But I know two of the judges scored all three rounds for you. So my question is, at, at the end of this fight, how confident were you not only that you got the win, but that you did win every round convincingly? I mean, look what happened in my last fight against that Cody Durden guy. You know, I completely, completely whooped his ass, and I still got robbed in that fight. So, anytime you leave it to the judges, you're just like, damn, like, you know, like, who are they going to do the right job? Are they going to, like, are they going to mess it up? But I knew I did enough, but I was just like, of course, once again, I'm leaving it to the hands of these, you know, these judges. And I was just like, damn, hopefully they get it right this time. And they did. So, glad for that. Yeah. I mean, you still come away with a win. Uh, obviously, it sounds like you know you want to finish. I mean, who who doesn't? But at, at the end of the day, like, what kind of grade would you give yourself? How happy were you with your performance? You know, I uh, I impressed myself. So, yeah. um, you know, as far as how happy am I? I mean, I'm I'm happy I got the the win. For but sure. I'm always 
I'm always aiming to improve and get better in all aspects of the game. So, uh, you know, it's uh, back to the drawing board. You know, I I celebrate the win. You know, I'm glad I got the victory, but it's uh, back to it. Yeah. That, that third round, too, was just super, super dominant, too. And I think you kind of answered what your question, uh, your coaches were asking for that whole time. You definitely had more volume. You can see those leg kicks were taking a toll on Andre as as well. What, what was kind of the difference in that third? Like, what was the biggest difference that you saw from that third round compared to that, you know, second and first? Oh, I got his rhythm and I got his timing. I got I, I got everything. Of him. Everything that he was doing, I, I could see it before he was even going to do it. So I was almost like I was a step in front of him while he was trying to be a step in front of me, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's interesting to see people fight you now too, because you, I, you're, you're so well known now for these light kicks. It's interesting to see how they, they prepare for that going into it. Oh, that's the fun part. Yeah. Know? That's the for fun sure. part. Cause I'm always, you know, I'm always going to find them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gonna absolutely. Find them. But you know, there's more to me than just leg kicks. So it's funny. Cause so, you know, it's, it's uh, it's a double-edged sword on, on their part too, because while they prepare for my leg kicks, I'm, you know, whatever, I'm getting better in other aspects of the game. So you never know what you see in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought you mixed up really well too. I mean, especially you were going low, high, I mean, re- really uh, attacking everywhere with the leg kicks. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. One, one thing, I, another thing I wanted to talk about too was you could obviously you see your uh, emotions pretty clear uh, in the post fight. And I know you were saying you want to, you know, be example for your son. And, you know, I think you even said just not your son, but anybody who's kind of was once in your situation where they had this dream and they, they want to follow it. So what is that like for you to, you know, just thinking back to your past and, you know, you had this goal and here you are, you know, on that road to achieving it. You know, I, I let people, I let the wrong people in my life and uh, I let people dictate my future for me. And, uh, you know, I was, especially like with my son's situation, I, uh, you know, I was close to uh, letting that dream slip away. And, uh, you know, I had a wake up call. Of course, I had a lot of other different things, other different factors. But ultimately, that's what it was. I almost let my dream slip away. And, uh, you know, I'm a testament to that. My testimony says it all. And like I said, I just want to be an example to not just kids, but even adults, you know, whatever you're going through. Uh, it's going to be hard, obviously, right? But yeah, I guess that's what separates the elite from the normal people is just going after, chasing your dream. And it doesn't have to be a dream of just fighting or sports. It can be journalism. It can be anything, you know? Mm-hmm. Hell, you, you, can be one, you can be a cook at McDonald's. If, if that's what your yeah. passion is, then, then go for it. Don't let no one, you know, detour you and, and, and tell you that you're, you're bad for that or that, you know, try to belittle you for that. You know, yeah. I had a, I had a lot of that. Um, I had a lot of that in my past, and uh, I kind of said the hell with it, fuck them all, and uh, I'm I'm here, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm curious too because of the way you kind of show those emotions too, and like what you just said to you, what you're kind of trying to prove as well. Have you gotten a lot of uh, outpouring from social media? Have you gotten anybody like kind of like message you saying like you know they're kind of in a similar situation and they're like inspired by you? Have you gotten anything like that? A lot. A lot, yeah. man. And it, uh, you know, it's sad to, to, you know, to be like, it's kind of sad to know that we live in a world where, I, I said this the other day, I was talking to some friends and I was like, uh, you know, it's sad that there's people in this world that just really hate to see people do good, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and man, I've never been like that. You know, I've always been the type of person where I see someone doing good or trying, I'm, I'm like, hey, man, that's pretty badass, man. Keep it up. I wish you the best. And, you know, to know that there's people out there that, you know, see people trying and then they, you know, they like shit on them. It's like, why? Like, because you never chase your dream. We let people stop you from yours. Don't stop other people. If anything, that should be an insensitive to you to be like, man, I, I need to get back on that horse and keep grinding. And so, you know, it feels good to, uh, it's sad in a way because how many people actually reach out to me and, and, um, and they're like, hey, man, you're an inspiration. And you know, thank you for that. And, you know, thank you for just being a, a role model. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy because I can, like I said, what my, what my, what my mission is to be on this earth is I, you know, I'm doing it. I'm doing God's work and, and, you know, and I'm happy for that. Yeah. It, you, you are right. Like it is sad in a way, but I mean, that has to be uh, motivating too in, in the same, in the same sense. Oh, it, it definitely is because I just, 
you know, when, when the, I now I now know that the best way, the best revenge on someone is to be successful, because that mm. just the more successful you are, man, the more it just drives people crazy. And honestly, I rather drive people crazy that way than than a physical form or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not touching you. I'm not doing anything to you, but my success is killing you. You know what I mean? That's the way you kill them. Yeah, the the higher road. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one question I did want to ask too, and I know it was kind of talked about a little bit, I think in the post fight as well. And, uh, only answers to it if you're comfortable with me asking too, but I was just wondering, like, as far as your son's situation too, is there any light at the end of that tunnel as, as far as like seeing him anytime soon? No, man, there's, uh, you know, of course there's different variables in there, but you know, I've, I've done everything. I've, I've done everything to align myself to, to be able to be with my son. And it's just, it doesn't happen. I don't, I don't know for what reason. I don't know how I don't, you know, I'm, I'm never going to give up on my son. It sucks because it's like, every time I feel like, you know, there's a little light, it just gets shut down. And I'm just yeah. like, what more can I do? So I'm just using this time to, uh, to better myself as a, as a human being and, uh, you know, as a father first and, and then as an athlete second. So but my job and my goal is to be as successful as I can and be the best role model I can be. So when I, you know, we will have our day. I, the last time, the, the last time, and this is, this is God's honest truth. The last time I saw my son was, uh, yeah, two years ago. And, um, he was saying, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of saying bye. Like when I talk to someone on the phone, mm -hmm. that is, you know, genuine, that person I love, I don't like saying bye. To me, that word is like, why am I never going to talk to you again? Am I never going to see you? And yes. my son, my son told me, uh, bye. He said, bye daddy. And, and I looked at him and I told him it's never a goodbye. As I'll, I'll see you later. And, you know, I made a promise to him that day and, uh, I'll be damned if I break it. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate you uh, sharing that, Chris. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about is a, a little more light, too, uh, is on Instagram. Uh, you had a post-fight picture uh, with your team, and I think you said that it kind of almost looked like, like a boy band. It really did. It looked like you guys were about to, like, you know, uh, do an album cover right then there at UFC 258. Yeah, see, you see that? That was dope, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was just, we were just in the mix of it, and we were just like, okay, who would pick? And we just, you know, we just all dropped down, and we just did it. Yeah. You know, uh, that's, it, that's how we are. You know, we're just goofballs like that. Yeah. If, if there was a, a boy band, would you be the, the front man or would you kind of let uh, Mark Montoya, you know, maybe take the lead there? I don't know. I don't know. Probably let Coach. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably let Coach. He's, coach is good at breakdancing. He'll probably be the, the, the lead breakdancer. Yeah. Another post on Instagram that stood out to me too, and this was back in October, but you had posted a, a photo, and I remember uh, the quote was, uh, a different mindset is a powerful thing. What, what kind of changes did you make mentally from maybe the last time we saw you too, now? Man, that's, that's exactly what that is. It's, uh, of course, going through all this stuff, right? And, you know, it's okay to be down on yourself a little bit. You know, it's okay to feel sorry for yourself, but don't stay down there too long. You know, because at the end of the day, it's it's you that's got to get back up. You're the one that's got to get back up and dust yourself off and keep going forward. You're the one taking the hits. You're the one getting shitted on, in other words. Mm -hmm. um, so it's up to you. You know, it's okay to, like, you know, to to mope around, feel sorry for yourself a little bit. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you know you're know, you I'm a man, and, and, and I have a role, and I have a job to do. So, you know, I talked to my coaches. I let them know the stuff that I was going through, and, I just wasn't in the right mindset. I wasn't in the right space. You know, I, I kind of hated myself to a point, but, um, you know, like they said, you are your worst, you are your own worst enemy. You're either your best friend or your worst enemy. And, uh, right now my, I'm my own best friend and, uh, you know, I'm glad to be there. So that's why, you know, I had a change of mindset and a couple of days later, I was just feeling good. And, you know, I just wanted to, to post and let people know it's true. You know, uh, a different mindset is a powerful thing, you know, and it, it really is, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty crazy too, when you talk about like that, because for someone who was having maybe like that kind of mindset too, most fighters who I feel like talk about that, they're, they don't, they're not usually unbeaten in their last five. So I can't imagine what a, a positive mindset, uh, you know, you'll be, you'll be capable of. Man, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. It's, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm a professional. I got a, I got a, I guess that's why I get so emotional, man, because like I, 
you know, only I know what I've been through, right? And I, and I, and I, and a very select few also know. So to be able to put all that aside, I, one of my old coaches, his name is Rob Stucker. He told me this one time. He said, you know, it's okay to be human, right? But the moment you step in that cage, the moment you step in that ring, you got to be Superman. And afterwards, you can break down. You know, you can be, you know, Clark Kent. You can be just a normal person. But when you're in there, man, you got to suit up and you got to you got to get down and dirty. You got to get to business. But after that, man, you can break down and you can be human. And, and that's that's what that shows, man. It just shows when I go in there, I bottled everything up. I put it on the side of the cage. And then when I leave, you know, that I open that bottle back up and just all the emotions pour out. And I hate it because, you know, I, I'm always crying on fucking tv but you know, it's, it's the it's the reality you know it's it's the reality of 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 everyday life it's the reality of a, of a human being and you know for sure so that's yeah. all i want to do is i'm just trying to bring awareness and bring light to certain situations you know like i always say i don't bash no one i just it's it's my it's my testimony it's, it's the shoes i've had to walk in so you know I'm sure every now and then I'll get a bad comment that, you know, some people, you know, they try to belittle you, but at the end of the day, you know, I wish them all the best, you know, yeah. I, w- I wish them good health. That's it. I wish them good health. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if anybody's um, making fun of you in, in the post fight for crying, uh, they, they should watch the actual fight. I don't think they'll be doing that, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, you, you got this win. Uh, and uh, obviously, like you said, you know, it's, it's time to kind of celebrate that and then get back to work. But uh, any thought about when you would like to get back in the octagon as far as like a timetable? Yeah, of course. Like I would like to in the next, you know, three or four months, you know, I like to stay active, got some little bumps and bruises. I'm trying to heal up, but, uh, you know, I'll be back. Nothing's going to keep me down for too long, you know, hopefully. But uh, I'm going to, you know, take some time and uh, go, you know, and take some time to myself, you know, and uh, heal up first and foremost, but also have time for myself and spend time with my family and my loved ones, you know. And that's just, that's how I celebrate my time, man. My downtime is to be close to my family. And I wouldn't have it no other way. Yeah. As far as that fight, too, anyone in mind, or is it just kind of, you know, whoever's on the uh, contract? I mean, yeah, both, right? Whoever's on contract about the same time, like, yeah, I would I would like I would like Miles Johns next, but we'll see. You know, even then, it's not even about basically what I want. It's That's not my option. You know, it's not my choice. It's what the mm-hmm. UFC wants. But if they feel like that's a good fight, then, then let's make it happen. Yeah. Uh, what, why Miles Johns uh, in particular? A oh, fun fight, just someone that you know we kind of came up in the same local local scenes and everything like that. We're both from from Texas, and and so why not? You know, it's a fun fight. Yeah, for sure. So, All right, Chris. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. Th- thanks for your time. Uh, is there anything that you want to add uh, before I let you go? Uh, you know, I want to thank all my sponsors, all my my coaches, my team, Factory X. Uh, my family, thank you, and everyone, you know, all the, my people, you know, thank you for all the love and support, and Latin, and you know, in South America, Latin America, everybody, thank you for tuning in, and, and showing love and support, man, it it really means a lot, so on to the next. (laughs) That's great, Chris, Uh, thank you so much for your time, I I really do appreciate it, I I wish nothing but the best uh, going forward. Thank you, man, I appreciate you giving me the time and interviewing me, too. Yeah, no problem, Chris. You have a good one. You too, brother. Thank you. All right, take care.